Now we come to the group activity. It's actually a simple activity. So the group, each group has to carry out four activities. I will talk about the activities. These are the four activities. Each group will be allocated a topic. On that topic, first activity is to construct a programming problem which can be used to illustrate some aspect of the topic or which can be given as an examination problem in a paper. So it's a, it's a programming problem. You design a problem either to illustrate some aspect of that topic or it is to be given as an examination problem. That is what problem. Second, describe the algorithm and program design for solving the problem. So this could be a description step-by-step -step process. Third, write a C++ program to implement your design. And this C++ program, if you wish, you can write it in two ways. One, how a student will write in the exam. And second, how ideally that program should be written as a preservable commodity and usable commodity, meaning full documentation, etc., etc. You can choose or you can write only the final version. It's all right. The last activity is you have to construct two multiple choice quiz questions related to the topic. They need not be related to this program that you are writing. They could be generic questions looking at some other. These quiz questions should be written such that you first write the question. For each question, for each of the choices, give a short one or two line explanation as to what that choice is right or wrong. This we discuss briefly in the morning. These are four activities. These are not very difficult activities. And since you are a group of four or five or six, it would be a good idea that you do this. But important thing is how do you coordinate, how do you distribute the work amongst yourselves, and what quality of work that you do. Now you will agree that if there are different groups, the quality of output will be different. Yesterday only we discussed productivity. And all of us get the same salary of a teacher, yet our productivity is different. There's no problem there. It's perfectly all right. Second, the same activity will be given to multiple groups. So I'm anticipating what you will be doing tomorrow. Instead of telling you tomorrow, I'm telling you now. First, some mundane logistics issues. So each group has to allocate uh, to do this activity, but you will have to submit a single file. So the entire preparation is text. The program is also text. The problem is also text etc 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 so use any available word processor most likely open office would be located on your machine if uh, you want to use microsoft and it is available absolutely no problem but it should be an editable thing the only requirement is that each of the four parts should begin on a new page so it is a multi page document but a single file the word document or a ODT document, single file, not PDF. It should be editable. I'll let you know why it should be. And the file name has to be very, very specifically given in this fashion. The file name of your group report should be the activity number underscore characters RC underscore coordinators RC code. Each group has a coordinator. I hope you have already worked that out. Except for two labs, I did not have that information. And from one lab, I have information about all the group members, but no coordinator has been uh, identified in that list which I got. So I will tell the TS to get that information, but that is okay. So this is what uh, you will have to give. So suppose uh, I am in a group whose coordinator's RC code is 2560, okay, and the activity given to me is activity number zero. Zero is a valid number in the serial number list. Okay, then the file name has to, this is explicitly required, 0 underscore RC underscore 2560. By the way, this is something that all of us should learn to train our students right from day one. Otherwise, you ask them to upload an assignment 3, 
you will get 100 copies of assgn underscore 3 assgn 3 assignment 3 just 3 all kinds of things <laughs> and you will have no clue on who has submitted that assignment so remember he also mentioned what is in a name and and i tell you that is a problem that it, whose significance people have not understood it is not only about variable names it is not only about file names it is about any name in nomenclature in general, our psychology is that we use a name which we can recognize. But when we are using a name which all others have to recognize, and when others have to recognize our name in the context of hundreds of submissions, then the file names have to be very appropriate. Now, the choice of the activities. There are exactly 10 activities listed here. You will notice that these are nothing but simplified list of topics that each one of us has to teach. I am not talking here about the group projects that students will be doing, etc., etc. But as we develop the course, we develop the topics like this. So they are, these are listed 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And the topic that is allocated to your group is found out from this simple logic. The last digit of the RC code of the group coordinator. Now, I want you to participate in a peer review exercise as well. So, what is that peer review exercise? When groups do these activities, I have checked because the coordinator would be randomly selected by that group. So, there is no... If, you, if I take all the RCs, I have last digit 0, last digit 1, last digit 2, etc., etc., multiple number of times. There are 277 people. But when I look at only the coordinator's RC, it is likely that all 20, 30 coordinators have only last digit 7. We do not know that. But I have seen from whatever samples that I have, that even they are randomly distributed. What it means is that there may be on an average, there are 277 participants. Okay, the groups are about, uh, I think, four to six people in each group. That is what they told me. That, uh, yeah, if you take five approximately, the total number of groups are between 40 to 50. Now, if there are 10 activities, on an average, there should be four to five groups doing an activity. It may so happen that because of this random allocation, some activity may be done only by as little as two or three groups. Some activities may be done by five or six groups, which is perfectly fine. When you upload these files tonight uh, or today evening when you finish the lab, these uploaded files will get copies printed as many as there are groups doing the same assignment. So, for example, if there are three groups, doing the assignment serial number 5, use of two-dimensional arrays. Then I will make three printed copies of these documents and will make these copies available to uh, for, for each of the group, by the way. So each group which has done the activity number 5, I will make three copies and such three sets will be available. Tomorrow, the coordinators of these three groups will have to sit together with these printouts, with their colleagues in the background, and they have to discuss and decide which component of which submission seems to be best. So it may so happen that the three coordinators and the other people may choose a particular quiz problem from one group, a particular uh, examination problem from some other group. Needless to add, all submissions will be available and accessible to all of us. So in future, if we wish to use them, anyone can use anything. But the objective is to understand the peer evaluation system and how this can be done dispassionately and objective. For example, let me ask you a question. If there are three coordinators who have to decide which is the best submission, okay, on let us say the choice of program or the program itself, and there is a dispute. And each coordinator says, no, the, the work prepared by my group is the best. This is natural and logical. Okay. 
Now you tell me, how will you resolve this? Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. By telling which is the worst. Okay, so let, let, me, let me digress and tell you how a reporter uh, last century, he correctly predicted who is going to be the future chess champion. There was an occasion when a reigning world champion died without losing to somebody else. So there was no world chess champion at that point in time. And the FIDE, which is the international organization, was wondering how exactly that we selected. That standard progresses, process is that the existing world champion has a match with the challenger. And if the challenger wins, that becomes a new world champion. But there is always a world champion. Now this poor fellow departed, his soul departed to the godly award and world, world did not know what to do. So what they did, by consensus of that committee meeting, they selected the four top players in the world at that time, who were undisputedly amongst the best. And they decided to have a tournament amongst these four. And the winner will become the world champion. So everybody was trying to predict based on the strengths and weaknesses and so on. So this reporter thought of a brilliant idea. He went to each player. Now if he asked the question, who do you think will be the world champion? Now that each player believes genuinely that he is the best. But out of maybe, he may not want to say this. So his answer could be arbitrary or could be self. So he did this. He says, he meets that fellow, sir, so and so, you are of course the most wonderful player. You are naturally going to be the world champion. But who do you think will be the runner-up? <laughs> and that fellow was very pleased, of course, I am going to be the world champion. But I think Botwinnik will be the runner-up. This was the answer given by all the four people. Because Botwinnik also, when he was contracted and he was told that you will be the world champion, but who do you think will be runner-up? He modestly said, I don't think I will be the world champion. It's a very tough match. I will be very happy if I am even a runner-up. He collected these answers and next day announced that Botwinnik is going to be the world champion. And Botwinnik indeed became the world champion. <laughs> so you may adopt this strategy. But what is worse? is that you still remain undecided and as somebody said, we'll come to you or we'll go to someone else. That is not a good solution even in real life. You have to solve the problem. Absolutely no way out. And the problem solution is what you must come up with. Because again, while what will happen is A, our personal sensitivities might be hurt. B, our genuine differences, that I might feel this is better, I, one might feel something else is better. Let me tell you fact of life. When you discuss these things qualitatively, there is no unique answer. It is impossible to say that one is definitely better than the other, unless in some exceptional circumstances. There is some aspect of everything which will be good, which is okay. So this is not an Olympic contest where we are working for a gold medal or something like that. But the idea is to become familiar with the process of peer review. Okay. Then on the final day, you remember in the timetable, there are group presentations. There are 10 groups, there will be 10 extensive presentations. And these presentations will be whatever has been selected as the best of the submissions by these. And as I said, this could be from here, there, something. Each presentation must include the RC numbers and names of all the partners of all the groups. Because the entire thing is recognized as a joint contribution of everyone. You agree with this? Yes. Fine. So this then is the exercise. Any questions or observations that you have now? So let me make one observation. Now. Please understand the power of the collaboration as I was telling you. In exactly one day, there are going to be 50 creations useful for the course. 50 in exactly one day. Imagine what would happen when there are 10,000 teachers. How many creations you would get? Imagine what kind of good filtering may happen when you crowdsource the evaluation there itself and you collect the best from each remote center. We coordinate all of them and finally you get a whole lot of 
useful material to be used not only by us, not only by the 10,000 colleagues, but any teachers and any students as well.